Here I have a variety of resistor trimmers. Some will lay flat on the board horizontally and some will sit vertically on a printed circuit board. All of these resistor trimmers are printed circuit board mount trimmers. The coating on the variable resistors or resistor trimmers is always kind of interesting. So for these two examples we have 103 here and 103 here. So the, the 1 and the 0 are just digits. The 3 would be the number of zeros. So therefore both of these trimmers are going to be 10k ohm trimmers. No magic for this resistor trimmer. It's marked 100k or 100k ohm. This resistor trimmer is marked 204. Remember now the first two digits, the 2 and the 0, are just digits. So that's 20. The 4 is the number of zeros. So we have now 20 and 4 more zeros giving us how much? You guessed it, 200,000 ohms or 200 K ohms. Here's another resistor trimmer with several different numbers on it. If we take a look here, what I'm looking at is the 104 here. So that is going to be 10 and 4 more zeros. So that will give me 100,000 ohms or 100 K ohms. This resistor trimmer has one set of numbers marked one way and another set marked up upside down. If we take a careful look at this, you'll see that this one is only 100 ohms. Sometimes you have to really look around to find out what the value of the resistor trimmer is. This one has the stamping on the wiper terminal or disc on the trimmer and it is 1K. So that will be 1K ohm or 1000 ohms. And sometimes you just simply can't find the coating on the resistor trimmer. So you can always use your digital multimeter or if you have an old analog multimeter, measure the resistance of it. So you'll always measure the outside terminals of the trimmer to find out the total resistance of the trimmer. So there's the outside terminals on this one, on the, this one, this one. I think you get the idea. The middle terminal is always referred to as the wiper. That is your variable resistance point. Now let's learn how to solder some of these resistor trimmers onto a printed circuit board. For this soldering demonstration, I will solder this resistor trimmer. This will lay flat on the board horizontally and this resistor trimmer which will sit vertically or upright on the circuit board. The resistor trimmer leads should always fit perfectly into the pad layout on the printed circuit board. Sometimes if you're really stuck, I suppose you could MacGyver the resistor trimmer, add some extra wires and have it sitting up off the circuit board a little wee bit, but that is not always the best way to do things. I've mounted the two resistor trimmers onto the printed circuit board. Now they do fit quite loosely into the printed circuit board so when I flip the board over and if I don't want these trimmers to fall out I'm going to use just a small amount of masking tape to hold them in place. To keep things simple I'm going to solder both of these trimmers uh, one at a time. So I've mounted the blue one here, the one that's sitting flat on the circuit board. I'm going to do it first. Okay, I have my soldering iron set to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to use 6040 solder. I've wiped my soldering iron tip clean in my damp sponge. I am working under a magnifying glass just to give me that little wee extra advantage for soldering. 
I make sure I cover up the entire pad. I don't want to see the whole outline of the drilled hole. And I do not want to touch any other additional tracks or pads with the solder due to bridging. So I've now completed that solder joint, wipe my solder iron clean and put it back into the stand. Now I did get a little bit too much solder on this one particular pad right here. You can see that it ran down the track, that's called solder creep. I can clip these leads down a little wee bit. I don't want to cut into the solder mound. I do have a good outline of solder around the pad. Now remember, this is a plate through board. If I do get too much solder, uh, gravity will win and it will go through to the other side and, causing, uh, and will cause a possible short. So be very careful when you're soldering and how much solder you will apply. Okay, I'm going to use my side cutters to trim the excess leads. I just kind of let the side cutter jaw rest on the solder mount and then I just snip the lead off. Of course now we'll clean the solder joint with isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. And there's our completed solder joint. Now I can remove the masking tape and we'll toss that in the garbage can. So that resistor trimmer is now soldered to the circuit board. So let's put in the second one. I have the second trimmer mounted into the circuit board. So again, I'm going to use just a little wee bit of masking tape to hold it in place. So this is how I've taped the resistor trimmer down. I'm making sure it's laying nice and flat and straight onto the circuit board. We're now ready to solder. I'll wipe my soldering iron clean on my damp sponge. Again, I'm still using 6040 leaded solders and my soldering iron is set to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure you get the flat part of the chisel tip onto the pad and the component lead for the soldering process. Now we missed a little wee bit here. We'll just touch it up. There we go. So we'll put our soldering iron in the holder and let's take a look at the other side. Let's remove the masking tape. There, and looks pretty straight this way. I'll give you another angle. Now this side looks pretty good. I don't have solder running up the leads here. I have seen students in the past put so much solder in that they've actually joined one of the outer leads to this wiper disc that is connected to the middle terminal of the resistor trimmer. And this happens because this is a plate through board. I'll show you what happens if we do put too much solder on. Okay, so I'm going to feed a little bit more solder in on this terminal just to show you the problem that we could run into. You'll notice the solder is disappearing. It doesn't seem to be balling up too much here on this side. I have a funny feeling it's all going to the other side and the gravity is winning. So this side doesn't look too bad. I do have some evidence that I've been spending a little wee bit too much time on the circuit board because the flux is starting to turn brown and burn. So let's take a look at the other side and see what I've done. So you can see here the solder balled up quite nicely. It's not something that we should be very proud of. 
Now we could use our solder sucker or solder wick and remove it. And again, as I said, in some cases I've seen the solder actually connect to this rotating disc. And that's not a good thing. Let's see if we can now remove that blob of solder that we don't want on this side of the circuit board. Again, I wipe my iron clean. I've got my solder sucker. I'll heat up the joint and suck away. Wipe my iron clean again. There we go. Okay, looks not too bad from this angle. Let's have another view of this. This is what the terminal looks like after I remove the solder, only with the solder sucker. I can tidy that up a little wee bit more using solder wick. So everything's fixable. No such word as can't. I'm also noticing with the magnification of the camera that the first trimmer I put in is sitting a little wee bit up off the circuit board. I can fix that. All I need to do is heat up the terminals while I gently push down on the trimmer. So I did actually two things. I heated up the two terminals on the back side of this blue resistor trimmer and gently pushed it down so it's laying flat to the board. And I took a small amount of solder wick and I cleaned off a little excess solder from that terminal that I messed up by showing you what would happen if we fed too much solder on the other side of the board. This is what the solder joints look like on the two resistor trimmers. I've just finished cleaning it up with the isopropyl alcohol on this side, so they don't look too, too bad. On this side, not too bad either. And if we look up, let's see if we can See them? Things look pretty much the way they should. So good luck soldering, soldering resistor trimmers.